Okay, so I'm going to be making a beef soup or caldo de res, but I'm going to make it in my crock pot. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the ribs, and I use the Uncle Chris Gourmet Steak Seasoning. Um, I like doing this. You, you don't have to, but to me, because I sear them before um, I put them in the pot to cook at any time. Get them off of here. They're still a little frozen, which is fine. I'm going to break them up here in a little bit. Okay. And normally, I'll buy the short ribs, the real thick ones. I didn't feel like going to the store and getting the real thick short ribs. So I decided whatever I had there. I had originally bought these so I can barbecue them. But I feel like eating soup today. So this is what I'm going to use. They're small. They're perfect. Okay. And I'm seasoning them because, like I said, I'm going to sear them. And be generous with the seasoning. Reason being that no matter what, it, most of it's going to fall off when you're stirring them. Right here. Okay, so I'm going to do, you know, I don't even know if it stayed hot or not. But all you're going to do is grab your rib. And put them in here to sear. And if um, you want to season all sides, I just did part of them right now, the top and bottom. But I'll probably put some more seasoning in here. Now this will help the rib cook a little bit more, uh, a little faster. But also, it'll seal in the seal in the juices. And um, that way, when it's boiling in the, well, it's not even going to boil. It's going to be cooking slowly. It's not even going to come up to a boil when it's in the slow cooker. But this, well, the bones of the meat will be falling off the bone, and that's what I'm looking for. And even though it's seared very, very lightly, I want a crispy little sear to that. And, of course, the more ribs you put to the pot the more um, the pan's going to cool off so it takes a little bit longer to sear oh which is fine that's not a problem it takes a little bit longer how toasty they come out. You could do it like that or you could leave it a little bit longer. And this one's ready to turn. See this one looks good. And you just continue to do this on all sides. Again, if it needs some seasoning on one of the sides, that um, you can always add more seasoning. You don't need to at this point because you're going to season the, the broth. It's going to have broth in there. So we're going to put some spices into the uh, crock pot. And what I'm doing right now I don't have anything in the crock pot, but I do have it where it's already on for six hours. I'm preheating it just so um, it'll be ready. 
when I put these in there. Um, what I'm going to do after I sear these, I'm going to put them in the pot just like that empty. There's nothing in the pot. It's empty. So what I'm going to do is put them in there just like that. Sorry, let me get this set up right here. Um, I'm going to leave them like that in there. And meanwhile, I'm going to throw some um, onions in here with some garlic. And I'm going to saute the onions until they're translucent. And then I'll throw that into the pan. Not the pan, but the crock pot. Make sure all sides are seared. Okay, so I'll bring you back once this is completely seared. Okay. okay, so we're getting the sear that we want. This is how you want to see the little fat and all the sides. This is the color you want. Okay. I'm go ahead and I'm gonna put them in the pot. Just empty. And like I said, the crock pot's already on, and I have it on a high stick. And I'm gonna go ahead and reset it because I've been leaving it there just to preheat the pot itself so that way it'll be hot when I, I would put the stuff in it but I'm going to go ahead and reset it to make sure that this um, soup go ahead and cooks in um, those six hours and I have it on high because I want it to cook a little bit faster Give me a moment here. Okay, so I'm um, to this now. I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. And it has a little bit of the oil in it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a jalapeno to it too. Right now I'm just going to slice it. Just in round little slices. But I'm going to let the onion cook for a little bit. And if you don't have to add the jalapeno, it's totally up to you. I add it because I, I like a little bit of spice. Oh, I actually like spicy food, period. But it just gives it more of a flavor. I don't want to add it right away because the, the jalapeno is going to cook fast. Okay, let me get this going here. And I like doing this because it gives it so much more flavor. Plus, I just pick up the flavor also from the ribs that I just sauteed on there. Just going to get um, my potatoes ready. I'm going to go ahead and toss that in there too. Now, these potatoes, I bought them in a little baggie. They're assorted, um, bite-sized, basically of uh, different color potatoes. You have your red potato, your purple potato, and your regular little, kind of like a little russet potato. But this is the, when you cut this in half, you know what, let me cut one so you can see the inside of each one. Um, okay, this is the purple potato, or if they call it red, kind of like the onion, I guess, purple. And it really is purple inside. And it tastes just like a regular potato. So I'm going to throw that in the pot too. And then the uh, regular red potato on the inside, it's just like a regular potato. And then you have your regular kind of russet looking potato. 
And that's just a slightly yellow inside, not much. But all these are going to go in the pot too. And I'm putting them in right now. And the reason being is because they do take a long time to cook. So I'm going to add the carrots and all that to it as well. I'm over here burning my onions. Give me a moment. I'm going to go ahead and add the jalapeno to that. Give me a moment. I'm just getting the lid for the pot. Keep some of that heat inside. Now, I don't know if you toasted jalapeno or any type of chili before, but if you haven't, um, the smell from the chili is going to make you cough. A lot of the times, I mean, I'm used to it, and once in a while, I'll still cough with it, you know, because the spice is so strong. But all I use is one jalapeno. That's all I want to use. I don't want to use too much of anything else. Let that cook for a little bit. Slicing my um, potatoes right now. Okay, so to this, because I want to get everything ready for the pot to be warm. I don't want it to warm up. I want it to be already warm or hot. So I'm going to go ahead and add my beef broth to this and warm it up. And this is a 32-ounce carton. It's uh, the store brand. No name brand needed. It's just a store brand. You can buy the low sodium, and this one also says caldo de res on it right here. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but this is the one I buy for the beef. Um, just let this warm up right here, and I'm going to scrape the bottom of the pan, so anything that's stuck, it's a lot of flavor that's down there, so I want to go ahead and scrape all that off so it can flavor up this soup a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to let that warm up a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm going to be cutting um, my potatoes. And I don't have to, but I choose to this time. So I'm just going to be cutting them in half. And it's a pretty little purple. I like those. Those are real pretty. And I like buying these for my soup. Sometimes I just buy the plain red ones like that. And... It's just much easier for me to have something this small bite size in the soup than, and I don't need to cut them. They're very tiny, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it. That's just what I'm doing today. Normally, I use your regular, <coughs> I can, um, I'm smelling the, the, the chili that's kind of tickling my throat. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that, but All that's going to go in the pot. I normally buy the green um, cabbage. But today I had half um, left over from this purple cabbage right here. And this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to take off the first layer. And you can see how pretty that color is. And then just cut it in half. Because I'm making a small pot. I'm not making nothing big. Uh, cut this in half and put it in there about an hour before... Um, you actually, uh, need it. I'm not needed. I'm sorry. An hour before it's finished cooking. Cause again, I'm going to do it for six hours. So we have this right here warming up. And you can see the little steam. It smells really good. I'm just going to throw the potatoes just so I can just throw it all together in the pot. I don't have to be messing with handfuls here and there. Okay, and like I said, let me add this to there. I 
make sure you turn off the heat. And careful because this might splatter. Try not to burn yourself. getting all the onions now if you feel that this is not enough broth for you which for me it's not I'm gonna add um, a little bit more but I'm gonna warm it up but meanwhile let me go ahead and reset this I'm gonna stop the cook the cooking time and we started again for six hours because I, like I said I was just wanting it to make sure this was hot when I was putting everything so I make sure everything's hot so it could cook a little bit faster so we got that going I'm gonna go ahead and get the veggies going too okay so now I'm gonna do the veggies and I'm putting the veggies already right now because since it is a slow cooker, it does take a while. And I put it, it each color indicates the size that you want. I'm going to go ahead and use a quarter size, a thick size um, on here. And be careful not to cut yourself. You could do it that way or a little bit longer. I'm scared to do this one because I don't have the guard on it, which I should. But you can either do them this way. Or you could do it just the regular little cut on here. So be careful not to cut yourself. Like I said, this is super sharp. So I'm going slowly because it scares me that I don't have the guard on it. Okay, just throw this little knob away. Have another one there. And then your zucchinis. I got yellow and or squash, whatever you want to call them. I got yellow and green. I kept the little stem on top. I just cut the little bottom tail. And okay, let me go ahead and put that in the pot real quick so I can make room for me here. And these, this is about a quarter size right here. Same thing with the carrots. Quarter size. You could, I love my mandolin, but just throw them in the pot. And I'm going to be doing some more carrots, but right now this is what I have here for you that I'm going to be cutting up. Same thing with the green. I haven't finished. I'm going to put the rest in there. Yeah. And you get your even slices. You can use this to make a little vegetable casserole in the, um, oven and stuff like that so let me go ahead and finish cutting this up and i'll be back okay so i'm going to add more um broth and this time i'm going to use the caldo de pollo which is going to be the chicken broth but a reduced sodium because they already come with plenty of salt so i'm not going to add any salt but i'm going to warm this up but to this being that the pot is already full and I don't want to mix it around because I want to keep the meat and the carrots and the potatoes at the bottom that way um, they get cooked if I mix it around I might not get that so to this I'm gonna add one tablespoon of your garlic powder and one tablespoon of your cumin, which is ajo and comino. Let's see here. And just mix it around a little bit. I just want to warm it up a little bit so it won't go in there cold. It's not like refrigerator cold, it's room temperature cold. But I want to keep everything hot, like I said, for the, the pot. You can hear the little granules from the 
spices at the bottom. You can feel it and hear it. And I'm going to give this a little taste to see if it needs any, bit, any little bit of salt. Okay. Tastes really good. I'm going to add another tablespoon of the garlic. Oh, well, that was cumin. This is the garlic. And then I'm going to add a um, tablespoon of your beef bouillon, which is going to be the caldo de pollo. This is what I use in powder all the time for all my baking, and not my baking, all my cooking. That's, and I'm only going to do one tablespoon right now. I want to taste it because I don't want it too salty. Like I said, the other one I put in, the beef one, that one comes already with sodium, the salt flavor in it, and I don't want to oversalt the food, the soup. So that's why I'm tasting as I go. Okay, just give it a good mix. See if I can get a few drops over here. Yeah. Mm, perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let that warm up. Then I'll put it in the pot. Okay. Go ahead and add it to this. And as you can see, I have the layer of the... Be careful. Okay, make sure you turn off your stove. So I'm gonna let that cook. I'm gonna go ahead and put my timer um for an hour, and I'm gonna go ahead and come check on it in an hour. Mix it up a little bit, make sure everything is going okay. So I'll be back in an hour. Okay, so it's about 10 minutes or 9 minutes and 20 seconds before the hour. And this is what it's looking like so far. And what I want to do is just kind of mix it around a little bit. Get all those spices mixed up in there that I didn't do earlier. It smells really good. Yeah, the meat's still tough. Of course, it's going to be tough. It's only been an hour. Okay, and it's up to you. You can put these about two hours, the zucchini, two hours with um, before you finish cooking the um, soup. I like mine super, super tender. Like, they basically disappear in my soup. But that's the way I like them. I don't like crunchy vegetables I like mine very tender so that's why I went ahead and put them right now so I'm gonna let this finish cooking and I'll come back in an hour make sure that all this is okay so I added some celery I added um, three sticks of celery I'm gonna add a whole Oh, uh, what size is this? Mm -hmm. A 20, uh, 29 ounce. It says one pound of um, corn, whole corn. And you can use frozen, you can use canned. It's up to you. So I'm just going to mix it in here. You can add it at uh, an hour before or a few minutes before. It's up to you. The corn's already cooked. But I want the corn to pick up some of the flavors of the spices. So I am doing it right now juices and all I probably should have warmed it up a little bit because it cools off the the pot juices uh, but it's okay we still have a uh, five hours to go okay so here we are another hour into it so it's been cooking for two hours
let's see how tender these carrots are. Oh, hot. They're still a little hard. And let's see this ribs. Of course, the ribs shrink. They're still hard. I want to be able to just let them fall off the, the bone. Okay, so I'm going to reset the timer for another hour. So every hour, I'm going to come check up on it. And that'll be, we're working on our third hour right now. It's looking good, smelling good. Okay, so another hour's gone by, so it's been three hours. All those zucchinis done. Get one of the carrots here and squeeze them. No, they're still a little hard. I mean, tender enough. But I like mine super soft. And the rib, well, yes, it's falling off the bone, but is it tender? Let me get a knife. Okay, let's see here. Yes, I'm just putting it in my counter. It's clean. I mean, it's cooked, but I still want it to be a little bit more tender. Actually, it is tender. I'm going to get a different piece. This one has a little bit of grizzle. Put this back in here. It's tender enough to eat. And this still has a bite to it, but it's still good. It's tender already too. Has a small little, um, not a crunch because it's not crunchy, but it's still a little firm. It's good though. Mm. Potato is firm as well. Let's see how tender it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, hot. Okay, so since it is done, I'm going to go ahead and add the cabbage. I'm going to take out the core. It doesn't look too appetizing. It's a little black. And add that to it. Okay, I'm just here in the side cutting some cabbage here. I'm just, it was a quarter of a cabbage. And you can use a green cabbage. It just so happened that's what I bought that day. It's what I felt like having. So I'm just going to soak that in there. Push it down into the... So actually, all this took three hours. I'm going to leave it for another 30 minutes just to soften up the cabbage, which you really don't need it softened. I like a crunch on my soup. Um... Maybe a little close up right here of the purple cabbage. 
I'm just gonna let it cook about 30 minutes and then I'll be serving it up. Okay, so it is uh, three and a half minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and turn off the pot. Let's see here, I'm doing it again by one hand. And as you can see, it's soft already. So it's soft enough for me. So I'm just gonna let it sit here for a little while only because I am making the rice right now. And that's what I'm going to serve it with, with some rice. Almost done. I don't know. Let's see if you can see it. Huh. With all this steam. So I'm going to close it so it can continue cooking. Let me turn off the heat on this. Let it finish cooking with the steam. Okay. So I'm going to serve it up and then I'll bring it back so I can show you what the bowl looks like. Okay, so here is my soup. It just came out a little bit ago. Oh, well, actually about 30 minutes ago. Let it cool off a little bit, waiting for the rice to be done. Have a little bit of avocado. I put some sour cream in it so it can um, won't turn brown on me. So the sour cream really helps. And then the uh, salsa cocida, some corn tortillas, my Mexican rice and a jalapeno in case you don't want the salsa. And some limes. I didn't have lemons, so we're doing limes. But I like the purple cabbage with it. You could see some of the the purple right here of the potato got lighter so tastes really good I already ate some and this is it I'm gonna take a picture that's why I have it on this little I don't know little cloth <laughs> on my table well if y'all try it let me know how y'all like it and I'm gonna post it uh, later on today on Facebook so please subscribe as well to my YouTube y'all have a good day